Radio, Dawbush, Dan Lode, 132, Andrew and Michael. Michael, thanks very much for coming along this morning. The good A morning. team, I like to refer to us. So a special good morning to Dan and Rod. You get nothing. Um, <laughs> only kidding. So, Michael, what's going on today? In particular, very timely that we're doing this video. Uh, thankfully, uh, Heather was a little time challenged because by being time challenged, there's been some big moves on Telstra this morning. Yeah, there has, Andrew. Yeah, we just heard from uh, TPG uh, Telecommunications, uh, TPM, the uh, the code. For those playing uh, at home. Yeah, that they've applied and uh, been granted um, some uh, what they call digital broadband spectrum. Uh, so they applied for two lots of 10 megahertz in the 700 megahertz spectrum. I did mem have to memorise that. That hasn't just rolled off the tongue. Even Andrew the nerd has got no idea what that means. Sounds <laughs> impressive. Uh, but yeah, ultimately, Andrew, yeah, TPG looking at effectively just building their own, uh, own network. Um, if this all sort of falls into place, they reckon they'll have up to 80% coverage uh, of wireless connection across the country. So I think that I was reading it gets turned on sort of April next year. And so Telstra share price, how has that reacted today? Yeah, negatively. Um, down about six uh, percent, I think, at last uh, at last read. So around about the four twenty five, four thirty mark. Uh, Vocus uh, Communications also feeling uh, the heat. They were down. Actually, they were down about four percent yesterday. Um, mm -hmm. So whether again there was uh, just sort of rumblings in the in the background, but they're down about another three uh, percent today as well. And TPG so. shares in pre announcement in halt. Uh, they're going to be paying for this. It's, it's only 400 million. Like 400 million is a lot. Don't get me wrong, but in the scheme of cost of spectrum, 400 million is actually probably not that much. I mean, it's probably cost them more. But from a funding point of view, they're hitting shareholders up. Existing TPG shareholders up one for eleven, five dollars twenty-five. So you'd expect TPG share price to come off a little bit, but relative to a 666 close yesterday. It's actually probably not too dilutionary. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, I think 400 million, Andrew, comes into what they're actually raising. Mm -hmm. um, the spectrum itself costs 1.3 sure. uh, billion, yeah, and they're going to spend an extra 600 million on the network itself. So it's actually around about a 1.9 billion uh, dollar spend. So it's probably getting a bit um, more realistic for yeah, the cost. Yeah, yeah. So the 400 million, yeah, as you say, being raised through this offering, they're, they're going to effectively fund a bit of this through debt in the short term, obviously, the 400 million. Kicked in from shareholders at the 525, uh, you know, will help a bit. Um, but yeah, it's going to be a, a three-year process, sort of from from start to finish. Um, but certainly, markets, uh, yeah, taking it all into account as if it was happening today and, right. and knocking the, the Telstra's and, and the Vocus's around uh, a fair bit. So putting you on the spot with uh, the spotlight on us, literally. Um, it is a good price this morning. <laughs> uh, Telstra buy, hold, sell. I'd be holding for the time being, perhaps with an entry closer to the, the $4 mark, even a little bit under. Um, I guess assuming, Andrew, they can keep the dividend stable. Now, this is, again, uh, you know, the million-dollar question, I suppose. At these sorts of prices, I haven't done the maths, but it'd have to be Here's around... one I prepared uh, earlier. You have to be around about, whilst I have a look. <laughs> yeah, it'd have to, have to be around about 8%, fully so frank. 31 cents, and let's say my entry price would be 14 so let's yeah. be pessimistic and say 14 that's a 7.6% fully frank dividend. Mm -hmm. So if we gross that up, add back the value of the franking credit for self-managed super funds in pension mode, it's about an 11% grossed up yield. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, certainly if that's maintainable from the Telstra end, looks very, very appealing. And that's probably the seminal question here, isn't it? Because, you know, they were, their first half result, as we spoke about a few weeks ago, was you know, pretty ordinary. But trust us, the second half will be okay. And we've just had one of those trust us... Um, foundations pulled out from underneath them, even though it's three years away. Uh, that NBN money runs out in three years too. So, yeah, I'm with you. It's certainly a hold. Closer to $4, it starts looking interesting, but it's just another competitive pressure for them. Yeah, absolutely. And again, yeah, it just goes to show, um, I guess, how quickly. Yeah, and TPG's been an interesting one, hasn't it? They've been in the, in the market for a long time saying they wanted to do their own thing. Um, CEO is David Teo, I think, from memory. I think he still owns a fair um, swag of issues as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, entitlement. And it's interesting, you know, you're right, TPG have got a lot on the go, and they're also doing something in Singapore. Yeah. Because they recently just bought some Spectrum in Singapore. So they're having a go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no yeah. doubt about it. So I guess from the point of view of the other thing we were going to talk about today was around the market. 
you know, and it's getting closer to that 6,000 point, this will actually be a bit harder for the market to get to 6,000 on the basis of that sort of pullback from Telstra. Um, what are your thoughts? Like, do you think we're going to get to 6,000 soon or we're going to wait a little bit now with this Telstra thing going on or what's going to propel us along a bit, do you think? Yeah, I mean, it's a good question, Andrew. I mean, I think first and foremost, 6,000 points is going to be a huge psychological level for the for the market. You know, we haven't been up around this sort of pricing you know, for 24 months or so. Um, but of course, you know, the Rand Affilia, um, as you well know, uh, yeah, 6,000 is going to be an extremely hard sort of a resistance level to break through. Yeah, so Telstra is a, a big part of the, the market index, so there will be an influence there. Um, but yeah, perhaps, uh, you know, assuming bank reports are, are pretty good, you know, NAB, ANZ, Westpac, um, that might be enough to drag us through the 6,000 point mark, but it is going to be a very tricky um, level to, to break through. Sure. Um, a lot of stuff happening around the world, of course, too. Things heating up uh, with Donald Trump and Kim Jong-un and, and Vladimir is uh, thrown in there as well. So, yeah. The oil price, a lot bubbling rallying around. as well. You're right. There's, there's sort of plenty of uh, moving parts, if I can put it that way. Um, and I guess probably the last thing, Michael, is just around historically, so you referenced before that April's usually a pretty strong month, and in part due to bank profit reporting season. What happens after April historically? Do we sort of keep on going, or does it come off a bit? Or? Yeah, historically it is, a, you know, there's a saying, sell in May and go away, and that's probably more of a reference to the US market in, in, a, lot of, um, in a lot of senses. Um, look, the... We've got the budget, of course, coming in in May, uh, the 9th, I think it falls this year. So, um, you know, that could throw a few uh, curly ones at us and it's going to you know, be a pretty tough budget by, by all accounts. Um, but we'll be, we will be getting yeah, those bank reports and um, the market's probably then had enough time to adjust and, um, and go into a bit of a, uh, well, a volatile period. A lot happens around that June uh, time frame as well with tax loss selling, all of that sort of stuff. So it's going to be volatile at the very into, least. Yeah, and sorry, Michael, and then leading into July, it's confession season for August profit reporting. So really what we're saying is April should be okay, Donald Trump willing, and then sort of May onwards, that's where things will certainly get more volatile. So watch this space. If you've got any questions for Dornbush Download, for the A-team here, or the others, uh, just leave a comment at the bottom.